hold this ensemble. Amen. Amen. The faithfulness that has been here uh, in spite of all through this pandemic. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. And we have, uh, again, given God uh, the glory. Yes. Uh, amen. We're, we're encouraging you before we start into our message to continue to be diligent, to continue to uh, wear your mask. Those of you, uh, yeah. even if you have been vaccinated, to uh, practice social distancing and still sanitize. Uh, we, there has been an uptick. We're not, we're not done yet. Uh, I was in a meeting and statistically, uh, we as African Americans are hovering somewhere around 26% vaccination rate. So those people next to you, uh, you think might be, be vaccinated, uh, they have not. And so we want to be more diligent. And we also want to spread the word. We want to spread the word in that effort. Uh, we're still not there yet. Yes, sir. Uh, and of course, there is a new, a new variant. So we want you to remain vigilant. Amen. Uh, we, we've lost members of this church uh, to the virus, and again, but David Jackson, who came and do our, did our choir in the day, yeah, yeah. Uh, succumbed yes, to the uh, virus. Amen. So we want to be uh, diligent in our uh, efforts. And this new wave is toward our young people. 90% uh, of the people being infected are non-vaccinated people, and this new wave encompasses our young people. But yet God is yes. still on the throne. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. And there is still a word yes. from the Lord. Yes. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for yes. this preaching privilege. Lord, we pray, let the meditations of our heart and peace, Lord, the scenes of our mouth be approved unto you. Help us not to be in self or, or in any other form, but as a servant, handling the most sacred texts of the Most High God. Lord, we say, we pray the prayer of Isaiah 55 and 11. Lord, let your word go out of my mouth, go where you purpose it, accomplish what you sent it to do, Lord, and not come back void. Father, we pray that you would hold our mind so that we might share what you've given us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today's sermon topic is, topic is 
a crescendo of praise. A crescendo of praise. God is doing a lot when he inspires the Apostle Paul to pray and at the end of his prayer Paul has a crescendo of praise. He stops, he pauses along the way and he says now unto him yeah. and, and now unto God. If you can't be happy about anything else, you ought to be happy about yes, God. Okay? Yes, Can I tell you what my grandma would say? He woke me up this morning. Yes, he, yes, he clothed me in yes, my sir. right mind. He gave me a reasonable portion of health and strength. When I stepped on the floor, my feet were, oh, thank you, God, that my bed wasn't my uh, cooling board. You know what I'm saying? You, you ought to get up praising God. And then you ought to have an object of your praise because, you know, we don't like to praise God. You talk about praising God in the, in, in the public sector and you start giving God the praise and the thanksgiving and the adoration that you give people get nervous. Amen. I, 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 I've been at that point. I've been at that point. I, I have a friend of mine and again, I was just not at that point in the praise and worship department yet. And and he give he say thank God he he say yeah, yeah, God 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 is is wonderful and yeah. and he would say if it wasn't for God and he he, he anything he did he gave God the credit and the praise yes sir yes sir and, and, and see if you are uncomfortable with that because you might be part of the frozen cho chosen or you might uh, not understand how to praise, or you may think it's undignified to praise, I would suggest to you that uh, uh, it, it is dignified to praise the Most High God. Yeah, 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 yeah. This God who is able to do, who has the dunamis or uh, the power to do anything. See, see, I'm not just praising somebody. I'm praising somebody that has all power. Somebody that can do something that I can't do. Somebody who can open blind eyes. Somebody who can uh, help me cross Red Sea. Somebody who can rock me to sleep at night. Somebody who can make old death behave. Somebody who can put my boss in place and make him shut up. I, somebody who can carry me along the way. Somebody who can protect me from COVID-19. Somebody who can keep me from road rage. Somebody who can help me even when I don't know I need help. Now on to him yes, that is able to do more abundantly above, beyond all that we ask a thing. That word abundantly in, 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 in the Greek is three words that talks about the hyper aspect of God's praise. It's to the point that I, I is super abundantly above the, the best praise that you can have. This praise is because we're talking about God that can do anything, anything. but faith. And so this, all of this is going on. Yeah. Pause, pause, pray. You know how it went at the end when it good, good. And you say, oh, Jesus. Yeah. And you begin to thank God for all that he's done. Yeah. And when you think about the goodness of the Lord yeah, yeah. and all he's done for you, you, you want, sometimes you want to just praise him. Sometimes you just cry. Sometimes you want to run. People say, why are you smiling? I say, you don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. I, 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 I've got a reason to smile. smile. i got a reason to shout. i got a reason to say hallelujah. I have a reason to say thank you, Jesus, because God has been good. To me. Yes, sir. Paul at the end of this prayer shows us that he gradually goes. We talk about God who is able to do more abundantly above all that we ask to think. A, a, a crescendo is a musical term yes, where you have a gradual increase of yeah. the of the volume of the excitement, and you bring it up to to a point where you start off slow. And you bring it up, and because as I go along, and I just I said I said I wasn't gonna tell nobody. 
I said I was going to act dignified this week. Yeah. I wasn't going to shout. Yeah. But, when I, but, 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 but when I got to the church and I thought about all the stuff I had been through, when, when I passed by the homeless man and knew that could have been me, when I stopped that jack in the box and I had the money to buy me a breakfast jack, I just said, thank you. And when I got here and the choir cut up and the and oh y'all know what I said, the organ was playing and then the and the keyboard piano was playing and they don't let them sing your song. Come on now. When you was in the world and you stepped in the club, but when you was in the world and you was in your car and and, and, and your song came on, what did you do? You turned it up, said be quiet. And, and sometimes you even sang with the music. You wasn't in, you wasn't on key. You were off, but it didn't matter to you because that was your song. And don't let the choir sing your song. Since I see, I, I'm still praising. I just changed my partners and see. And so that song coming then when you hear a prayer, and it seems like the man is praying the same thing that you need prayer. And then when you get in tune with God, you come to a place of participation in the praise, the adoration. And the worship of our God. So it is my argument that we can participate in this crescendo of praise. It's like double Dutch. If you can't get in on the fast one, get in on the on the middle one. If you can't get on the middle one, get in on the little one. If you can't get on that, you just practice all by yourself so you can learn to get in there. Because you just can't just can't get in there all. Will and Ellie, you got to know your step. What I'm saying is, how do we engage ourselves in this crescendo of praise? All this stuff is going on. The power that worketh in us. To him be the glory in the church, in Christ Je Jesus, for generations to come, forever and ever. How do we engage ourselves in this generational, eternal praise that is going on to the most high God? I'm glad you asked. Right. The first thing that we can do is that we can engage his power through prayer. The word ask that is used in the text because everything up, up until then talks about God. Him who is able to do far more abundantly beyond all that we then it starts as. So we can engage God through prayer. All right. All right. The late Alan Trent Guillory said you either, you either have to be stupid, uh -huh. ignorant, uh -huh. crazy, uh -huh. or retarded uh -huh. not to pray. Right. For a Christian that has the ability to come boldly before the throne of God and make his request known unto God. That, that doesn't make sense that you don't do it. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. For, 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 for a believer that knows that anything that we ask according to his will. He heareth us. If it's in his will. That means he hears you and he will give it to you. Oh, come on now. Come on now. Uh, you, you, you're not traveling with me. Knowing that, that God is able to do y'all not traveling right? some, some people are not able and not willing those are the worst people they wouldn't help you if they could you know what I'm saying they, they don't have nothing and, they, and they're not willing to help you matter of fact if they get a chance they're going to pull you down then there are people who are, are, are not able but they are willing. Yes, yes, yes. They're, they're willing. They would if they could, but they ain't because they can't. Y'all not traveling with me. I, I know that's not the king of English, but you know where I'm going. They, you know, I would not give you the money, baby, but I'm broke too. You know what I'm saying? I, I would give you a ride, but my car is in the shop. They have the heart to help you, but not the ability to help you. Amen. You know what I'm talking about? And then there's some people who have the ability but don't want to help you. You know how you said them the people when you come to them say, I know you got it. 
I, I, I know you got it. And, and then they want to tell you, well, no, I can't help you right now. They never address the issue that they have it. And these are the people who have the ability, but yet don't want to. But God not only has the ability, but he wants to bless you. Not only does he have the ability, he has the power to do far more abundantly than what we ask or can get there yet. We still don't want to ask y'all. Y'all trying to make me rush. This ask suggests that there is an attitude of the asker who knows that the person they're asking is able and willing. Yeah, yeah. And the only time he doesn't bless you is when he knows that what he would give you will hurt you or is not good for you at this time. You, you know, again, you can't give a kid a chicken bone if you don't realize that some of the bone in the chicken will get in their throat, choke them, possibly kill them. So again, especially with that gristle on the end and that little side piece that go on the drumstick, it may look like he can handle it. It may look like it's innocuous, that it's not a problem, but really it is. When we ask, it is the type of asking where a child acts a parent, where we say, Father, I stretch my hands to thee that no other help I know. It's the case of men asking something from God in that I need something that I cannot produce on my own. Something that I can't get by myself. Yeah, y'all not traveling with me. I'm a tall man and many times in, in the grocery store people ask me, but could you get that from me off the top shelf because that stature is lower than mine. Y'all not traveling with me. And even if they try to reach, they can't because they're short. But what they do, they, they find somebody who is taller than them and they say, baby, please get that up for me. And I want to tell you that God is taller than you. He's stronger than you. He's more powerful than you. And he can tiptoe into the, into the annals of heaven and bless you like nobody else can. This asking is like a beggar who is passing by who, you know them people, they say, well, baby, just give me anything. There's a gentleman that is on South Main and Buffalo Speedway. He does not ask for money. But on a hot Houston day, he asks for water. Yes, he does. He sit right there at Starbucks and he asked for water. I saw the sign. I said, let me go and get him some water. But when I thought about it, you know, he ought to have a few dollars to buy his own water. Y'all not traveling with me. But see, because he asked for water, which is something he needs to, to, to survive, people not only want him to survive, they want him to thrive. Y'all not traveling with me. They, they realize he's in a wheelchair. Y'all not traveling with me. Outside in the hot sun. And, and when what happens is they'll bring him water. But they want him to have a little bit more. And so usually most people who bring him water. Also bring him a few dollars. Oh, y'all not traveling with me. Sometimes when we ask God for one thing, what he does, he winds up giving us some extra. Y'all not traveling with me. I wish I know how to say that uh, 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 Louisiana word. This is something I limb something, but I don't know how to say it, so I'm not going to be cussing and caging. I'm going to leave you. I mean, you Louisiana folk know what I'm talking about. A little extra. You know what I'm saying? I know I'm supposed to give you some gumbo, but I'm going to give you a little, a little etouffee with it. Y'all not traveling with me. A little extra. Have you ever talked to God and God has given you a little extra. When I ask and petition God, I can participate in the holy of what God is doing because all of a sudden I can celebrate on what I ask for and what I get, what I got. You know, come on now. Anybody got a testimony of what the Lord has done for you? There's some people right here with some tailor-made clothes on who used to have to shop at the Goodwill. We used to have to reach down in the barrel and get them a pair of pants. Had to go over there and see if a pair of shoes fit. Had to make it last till next time. But yet, now they can look at me. Oh, y'all not telling me. Sometimes I just thank God. I, I just thank God. Not, not for the material blessing, but as much as where he has brought me from. Amen. Didn't always look like I looked. Didn't always have what 
that I have. Oh, but I thank God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We also can engage in this crescendo of praise as how we think. This thinking is not what you think it is. When actually it's the word metaneo, which means a change of your behavior or your direction. Change how you think, how you accept or understand what God is doing. It is how you perceive afterwards, not before. Since I know all the things that God is and all the things that God does, and since I now have prayed to him and I know that he can help me along the way, now I, I perceive things differently. I don't think the way I need to think about things. I think the way God thinks about things. If we delight ourselves in him, he, he will then give us the desire of our heart. No good thing will he uh, withhold from them that now walk uprightly. If I abide in you and you abide in me, you can ask, you know, y'all not traveling me, what you will. So it has the has the, has the change is we have to change our stinking thinking. We have to change our selfish desires. We have to change our our thoughts because his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts and as high as the heavens are above the earth are his thoughts and ways above ours so what we have to do we have to pray better yeah. y'all not traveling with me we have to petition better and many of us petition for things that don't glorify God God knows what you're going to do with it he already know you ain't angry that's why he's not going to let you win the lottery not going to let you win it. Your, your number ain't coming. Your number ain't coming. First of all, because you're not tired of now. You're not giving now. But second of all, he knows that you're going to act a plum fool. You know how it is. Somebody got their stimulus check and they was eating crab legs. They, they went and got the hair done. They went and got the nail done. They, yes, they did. They rented a car. They, they did everything but pay their bills. They did everything but catch up on what they needed to catch up. Because there are those that no matter how you bless them, they're going to mess it up. Oh. They're going to talk to the wrong people. It's a mindset of a moral aspect. It is a contrast because it's not how I perceive beforehand. It's how now I perceive afterward. Amen. After you've been with the Lord and after, after the Lord has blessed you, after the Lord has taught you, you handle your you handle your resources differently because now you have a better idea of how to think and how to act. You used to think that church, all the church did was want your money, but now you realize all the things that you can do through the church. Y'all not traveling me. It, you, you used to think all the pastor did was preach on Sunday, but once you call it to the hospital on Monday, to the grave on Thursday, to the jailhouse on Friday, you realize that he is invaluable in what he does. And guess what? You don't mind putting something in a little box because you know that it goes beyond Sunday what the man of God does. And so when you when you have been trained in the word and your, your, your mind and your heart has been washed, then you even think differently. What you think, we, how we see our purpose in our thoughts and his thoughts. It changes. I just don't want some stuff. I want something I can do something with. Y'all not traveling with me. I, want, I, I, I don't just want some stuff. I want something that I can do something with that I can bring about a change for the better. I can make an amendment. You know, somebody have a contract and you know it's a bad contract. And what you do is you come back and try to renegotiate. Come on now, some of y'all. You sign a contract at the dealership and you come back and try to renegotiate. I don't even fuss with them. I just go to credit you and get a refinance the whole thing. Y'all not traveling with me. See, when you know better, you don't have to argue with the dealership. You don't have to be mad with them. 
You don't have to have your lips stuck out. You don't have to do anything. All you have to do is say, if they finance me, I'm going to go refinance. Yeah, I'm not trying to because see, you you know what you what you ask for is different. You know not to ask people that's not gonna give it to you anyhow. Why are you frustrated at where at asking worthy people to do Christian things? Why are you why are you frustrated because you're dealing with a carnal Christian? You're dealing with somebody who, who don't respect women, they got seven baby mamas, and, and, and you wanna you wanna get with them. May I suggest to you, if you get with them and have a baby, they're going to treat you the same. And your income, and his income is going to be, you're going to help him pay the child support on the other seven I don't know where that came from, but I think somebody need to hear it in Jesus' name. Lastly, after we engage his power through prayer and how we see our purpose and our thoughts, we ask different, we think different, the Bible says, According to the power that worketh in us. Say, let his power work in us. Let his power work in us. Now, God is inviting us into this crescendo of praise. He's saying to the church, I put some power in you. I put the Holy Spirit of God in you. And if you will allow me, I will do great and marvelous things. All you have to do is be willing to allow the Holy Spirit to do his perfect work. You have to be willing to deny your flesh and yield yourself to the Holy Spirit. And it's not me, it's Mary and Mary. Mary and Mary say, it's the God in me. Y'all not traveling with me. When God is in you and you let his power to be manifest, you preach sermons you can't remember. You sing songs and you don't even remember what you said. You're able to bless people and you, you, you don't even know how you blessed them. You just said something. For you, to you, it was just idle words. But to them, it was the words that they needed to hang on to. When you're in his power, you can do more abundantly, exceedingly above all. When you're in, in his power, you know that you don't give you the glory. You give God the glory. So is there anybody here know that I didn't get here by myself? I got to give God the glory for where he brought me from. I got to give God the glory how he uses me along the way. I got to give God the glory because he's been good to me. I don't know what you know about God, but God is good all the time. 
and no of praise. Gradually rising with joy. Gradually rising with praise because of what God has done. Ought to be someone here today that gets excited about when they think about what God has done. When they think about what God has brought us from, would you come to me?
Lord, our missionary Baptist Church. We pray that God will continue to bless them. Many others have left this world, and I want you to know that, amen. This pandemic is serious. You can wear your mask. You want to wear two of them, wear them. Wear three of you think you need to. Amen. 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 Cover yourself. You, something wrong with someone who won't cover themselves. When you get cold, you cover yourself. Amen. So you need to cover yourself. This pandemic will get you. We don't say we rely on these. Amen. Shots. Shots do his part. But there are some parts you've got to do too. Amen. Oh, bless your father. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank, thank you, thank you. Thank you for the patience. Oh, you yes, yes. Thank you, Lord. Bless our brothers. Bless today. Touch yes. them, Father. Yes, Lord. Yes. Father, get on the stress to put yes, on this protection. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Watch out for themselves. Yes, oh, yes, yes. Father, please help them, Father. Help today, Lord. They need to have wise yes, sense yes, to know yes, that yes. it is serious. Yes, it is. Yes, Father, yes, Lord. and bless this land. Yes, Lord. Clean it, Clean it purge it. Jesus, yes, Lord. Jesus, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, officers. I want to give the officers a special thank you, especially for the ones who are Amen. inside the building and Amen. those who clean the grounds. It looks great out there. And we had a little setting last week on some pups and dogs, and they, man, they got that cleaned up. And we want to, I feel so sad that so many little pups had died. But uh, we don't have no control of that, but we surely ought to be thankful and pray. We're getting ready for our thoughts. Uh, Okay, deacons, your man Lewis want to share something. Amen. Uh, as the pastor was preaching, the other day I, I, I used Uber to go to the clinic. Mm -hmm. And the guy that was driving, I said, Lord have mercy. He said, what is you calling on the Lord for? He ain't did nothing for you, me, and nobody else. He shot me. I don't want to get out of his car. But I had to get to the doctor's office. And when I, but as he was talking, he was steady going faster and faster. I said, Lord, I said, please don't put your hand on it now. Please, Lord, because I know what he's talking is nonsense. And he was telling me about God ain't never did nothing for him. And he ain't did nothing for me. And I said, how did I get in a car with a dumb boy like this? But I thank God he watched Amen. over me. Amen. I just wanted to mention that. Amen, son. Well, I thank you for mentioning that, Deacon. I think we need to hear that. There's still a lot of people that don't believe in God. And some don't believe in him because they've had a bad experience. And it's sad when people make a bad experience, uh, make them feel that they ought to hate God. Because God didn't do that bad experience to you. God is a good God. And everything he does to you is good. Sometimes it might not be what you want. But it, it might start off might not start off good, but it end up good. Anything that's God is, amen. So I want to share that, amen. God is good all the time. We get ready for our Lord's Supper, Pastor Michael Joseph is going to share the Lord's Supper. Thank God for those at home who have your Amen. Lord's Supper and drink. For some of you who are, were not ready for that, uh, get your little drink. Out uh, your refrigerator, your juice, or whatever. I um, talked to some of my kinfolk. I say, leave the Jack Black where it is. Amen. Go get your juice out there. Amen. I'm talking about some of my kinfolk. I don't know about your kinfolk. <laughs> I go talk, tell them to get the juice out there. They get the juice out, amen. Some of them will get the wrong juice, amen. We want to get the right juice today, amen. We want to, amen. Do what we do here today for the Lord, isn't that right? In the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 11, he has a little sharing that the Apostle Paul wrote for us. He said, Now in this that I declare unto you, I praise you not, that you come together not for the better, but for the worse. First of all, when you come together in the church, I guess there'll be divisions among you, and I'm called to believe it. But there must be also heresies among you that they which are approved may be made manifest among you. When you come together, therefore, into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's supper. The attitude is bad, that's what he's saying. But in eating each one of you, taking before the other, 
his own son. And one is hungry, and another is drunk. What? Have you not a house to eat in, or drink in? But despite you, the church of God, and shame them that have not. What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? He said, I praise you not, for I have received, for I have received the Lord, the Lord, which I declare unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take ye, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do it remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup, and when he had supped, said, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. But often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Well, for whosoever shall eat this bread, amen, and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eat it and drink it unworthily, eat it and drink it damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. When we judge ourselves, we should not be judged. When we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brother, when you come together to eat, carry one with another. If any man hunger, let him eat at home, that you come not together to condemnation. And the rest will I set in order when I come. That is the word of the Lord. Prepare your hearts, prepare your minds. Remember that, amen, we all sup together. We take this Lord's Supper and we all do it at the same time. Amen. For all of you who are ready, Pastor Joseph will come. Amen. And share the prayer. Father, we thank you, thank you, Lord, for this memorial yes, yes. to you, yes, Lord, for this Eucharist, for this Lord's Supper, yes, Lord. Lord, we pray, God, that we would yes, yes. get our hearts in tune with yes, what you did yes, for us on yes, Calvary. Yes, yes. Not be thinking about anything else but the price yes, Lord. you paid on Calvary. Yes, Lord. Lord, we pray, God, yes, yes. that we would. Eat this supper worthy. Yes, yes. That means with our mind on you yes, yes. and what you did on the cross. Yes, Lord. Forgive us for our sins. Yes, Lord. Lord, to help us, oh God, to make it in our mind right now. Yes, Lord. That if we have any heart with our brother yes, or yes, sister yes. in Christ, oh, yes. that we will re reconcile them in love. Yes, Lord. Thank you for this church. Thank you, Lord. Thank, Thank you. you for this pastor. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for these that are here. Yes, yes. And for those that are coming through us through Facebook and other methods, oh, yes. Lord, we pray, God, that you would extend Please. your power and your grace. Yes, yes. And we would be here today in communion. Yes, yes. In your name we pray. In your name. Amen. Amen.
man, if anybody has a defective capsule, please let us know and we'll bring you another one. Amen. The Bible says tarry for one another, that we do it all in unity at the same time. I don't know why I said it, but it said it. So let's try to be Amen. obedient Amen. to what has already been instructed yeah, for right. us to do. Amen. Amen. We'll wait for a few of our brothers and sisters to get there. Everybody's there. Amen. The bread that you hold in your hand is a symbol of the Lord's body that was bruised, bloody, and beaten for us. Let us eat it in remembrance of him. The Bible says eat ye all of it. The cup that you have in your hand is a symbol and representation of God's blood, of Jesus' blood that was shed for us on Calvary. Let us drink it in remembrance of him. The Bible says drink ye all of it. Amen. Amen. Thank God our brothers are going to come around and get your receptacles. We pray that you have uh, taken this supper, that if you have uh, one confessed sin, you deal with that. out to a church, we, 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 we will be more than happy to join you, get another location, we will be more than happy to direct you, yeah. that's a come one out, no people all over yeah. the country, we'll be able to direct you to a place where you can grow in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Yes, I want to thank God for Pastor doing such a beautiful sermon. Amen. 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 I want to thank God for all of you, and those that have been tuning in to us on mm -hmm. yesterday, I had a Especially a little setting with my family. We got one of our family members that they gave us six months to live. Three months. Uh, was three months, three months to live. Uh, Sister Uridale Butler Morris. I pray that you would pray with and for her and for our family. Uh, she's a lovely person. And uh, shared with some of them that we have our program set up on Sunday mornings at 9.30. Uh, some of them didn't realize probably that I wouldn't preach this Sunday. But next Sunday, I will be preaching. Amen. Uh, but I know that you will not disappoint in such a great sermon. Amen. Pastor Joel, and I'm looking for uh, probably another part of that, because that was good stuff there. So maybe he can give us a second, second part of that someday. Amen. But I thank God for him, and I pray that you continue to bless us and pray for us in all that we do. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for yes, allowing God. us yes, to God. participate in this yes, crescendo of yes, praise. Yes. Father, we pray, God, that you would change how we, oh, please, Lord. How we ask for, yes, how we think, yes, yes, and allow your power oh, yes. to work in us. Lord, yes, Lord. Lord, we'll praise you yes, forever and ever. Yes. As the church says, yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen.